Hello and welcome to News Click. Today we are going to discuss the reason for the pollution crisis that Delhi has faced over the last couple of weeks and what are the reasons for it and what are the long term consequences, what are the long term policy measures that we might need to take. To discuss this with us, we have D. Raghunandan, who has been studying these issues for a long time and also part of the All India People Science Network. Raghu, can you tell us that a lot of this issue seems to stem from the climatic conditions or the weather conditions at this particular point of time. And it seems to start with what would be the problem that has been identified as due to temperature inversion. Can you tell us what it means and what the consequences of inversion, temperature inversions are? Uh, we would know that uh, normally in winter the cold air tends to settle to the bottom. And uh, in winter therefore you do have a cold uh, layer but you have what is called an inversion effect. Normally you would get warm air moving upwards, but in winter you get the warm air sitting there and the cold air unable to rise above it and therefore settling down at a lower level and keeping all the pollutants uh, closer to ground than they would earlier. So you and I when we walk on the street would breathe in far more pollutants that you would in the summer when the warm air would have carried it up. So it's because the earth cools relatively right. and if the sun during the day is unable to cool, uh, heat the earth, yeah. then that, that seems to continue yes. this problem. Of so there are inversion. two problems in the winter time as it is now. One is the temperature effect, which is the cold air staying down. And the other is that if there is no wind, which will actually pick up later on in the winter, uh, if there is no wind and there is still air, then everything stays where it is. When the cold winter wind start blowing, it will carry the pollutants away. So it will break up the inversion layer. If That's, right. Wind. That's right. Also if there are rains? Yes, the rains will bring down the particulate uh, matter. Because uh, around the particulate matter, the droplets uh, will form and they are heavy enough to bring the particulates down. However, if there is no rain, but there are fog conditions, then what happens is you do get uh, moisture, little droplets, which coalesce around the aerosols or particulate matter, which makes them denser and makes them hang in the air even more. Uh, so if there's very dry, wintry conditions, you'll have less of this problem. If there is rains, then you have less of this problem. But if you have still cool air with moisture, that's the worst of all possibilities, which is what we are going through now. Now, coming to the other issues, yeah. uh, we have been talking about Delhi primarily in terms of the newspapers. Yeah. But this has been across the whole of North India, particularly right. starting from Pakistan as much as in up to Bihar. Absolutely. So this is a much larger phenomena than what people like to believe, a localized phenomenon. Absolutely. In fact, today if you look at the uh, pollution map of India, you will find the entire northern region, particularly the major towns and cities, having more or less similar order of problems of pollution as Delhi. Let's just look at it quickly, the aerosol map. That's right. So uh, this is the aerosol uh, position and here is what you see throughout North India in the winter, this is what you'll uh, get. Now, what happens in Delhi more than maybe in other cities uh, is the number of vehicles that we have or the industrial uh, pollution that we have. That may be little more in Delhi than somewhere else. Some other cities like, uh, let's say, Kanpur will have more industrial pollutants, less vehicular uh, pollutants. But all in all, the winter conditions will exacerbate the existing high pollution levels that are there. And that is why here in the map you see a big difference between the northern uh, cities down the Indo-Gangetic belt as you would if you go further south. That's an interesting issue. The Delhi, of course, has seen a lot of diesel vehicles. And diesel yes. vehicles particularly prone to particulate matter emissions, particulate matter emissions, right. particularly the lower, uh, smaller uh, sized PM particles, 2 .5. PM 2.5. Yes. Uh, this is a huge problem. Ever since the liberalized automobile policy came into effect, 
and diesel vehicles were given uh, uh, freedom to multiply and proliferate uh, in the city without uh, controls, uh, this problem has exacerbated. But we must keep in mind a lot of the focus now is on smog and on particulate matter related pollution. We mustn't forget that diesel is also the root cause of a lot of uh, NOx, nitrogen oxides, uh, of carbon monoxide, all of which again in the winter tend to stay at lower levels. These are highly carcinogenic uh, materials. So when we talk of pollution, although so much of the focus is now on PM 2.5 and particulates, we should not forget that there are other deadly pollutants around which vehicular uh, pollution, particularly through diesel, is causing in Delhi. Coming to the stubble burning issue, which has yeah. also been the focus, there is a, has been an attempt to make this the main culprit. Right. While, of course, it has its uh, contribution, this is not the only reason. One is climatic, other pollutants which are being emitted. But yes, you can also see the stubble burning is a particular uh, problem that also takes place Unfortunately, at the yeah, same exactly. time, the inversion takes place. Exactly. This is the extent of the problem. Yeah. We can see Punjab and Haryana being uh, much more of stubble burning areas. Rest seems to be much less. Yeah. And even see, you can see Pakistan, though there is some stubble burning that takes place, is this is much Far less. 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 So what do you think is the reason for the stubble burning yeah. and what are the things that can be yeah. done? First, as you rightly said, the stubble burning, unfortunately, takes place precisely during this time when in the early winter conditions, you get the particulate settling down, the stubble comes floating across from Punjab, and that also settles uh, down, uh, exacerbating this problem. It will last for about a month and a bit. Things start getting better, then everybody forgets the pollution problem, <laughs> despite the fact that a lot of the other pollutants are still uh, around. But the stubble issue, we must understand, is peculiar to our areas in Punjab and Haryana directly as a result of the Green Revolution. Because these are areas where traditionally paddy was not a major crop. Today it has become a major uh, crop and a major export crop uh, at that. And there has been extensive mechanization of farming uh, in the Punjab and in Haryana. And combined harvesters are now used to cut the uh, wheat, the winter wheat uh, crop and the paddy uh, crop. Now the combined harvesters compared to the earlier traditional manual harvesting leaves a stubble of about a foot and a half. Whereas the earlier manual operation would have left a stubble of just a few inches above the ground which would have got plowed in to the soil for the next uh, planting. That cannot happen now. The farmer has to spend a lot of money in order to clear the stall stubble. Uh, maybe around in the region of 60,000 to a lakh or so. And farmers today are already suffering from lack of good remunerative price, but high input uh, costs. If you compel the farmer now to add more costs by putting the burden of clearing the stubble on the farmer, he's unable to bear the cost. He takes the easier method, which is to set the stubble on fire. This is what is happening. Unfortunately, all the authorities, Punjab government, in the NGT, everybody is putting pressure on the farmer that they should, penal action should be taken on the farmer. If punitive action is the only measure that you take, the farmer is going to resist because he has no way of, uh, you're not encouraging compliance, you're actually discouraging compliance. So what you need to do is to work out both a financial as well as an institutional arrangement which will enable clearance of the uh, stubble from the farmer's uh, fields. You can recover a lot of the cost either by using the stubble for power generation. There's a very fairly good tariff being offered to biomass-based power generators in Punjab, provided the fuel is brought to him. 
uh, to the power generators. The same is with cardboard manufacturers, the same is with pellet uh, makers. There are a lot of uses provided the government has to play an important role in facilitating uh, meeting the costs of the farmer and setting in place an institutional mechanism which can enable uh, clearing of the stubble and delivering it to a user. Okay, last point. The government, while it has been talking about penal action against the farmers and so on, similar steps regarding, say, either vehicular pollution, uh, diesel vehicles, plus also small industries where the government has been sitting on from 2014 on some of the emission norms. Do you see this also as a part of really looking at the weakest section in order to Absolutely. penalize him and not at others? Absolutely. You are now threatening punitive action against the farmer, saying if you don't stop stubble burning, we are going to come after you, put you in jail or uh, whatever, fines and so on. I don't see anybody putting a fine on a diesel vehicle on the streets of Delhi or impounding a car. I, I don't see any construction. Black smoke. Exactly. I don't see any builder being put in jail because his, he is emitting construction dust. I don't see the corporation bosses being put in jail because they are not doing anything about the road dust which is thrown up every day because of mismanagement and lack of infrastructure of the roads, which is allowing the dust to keep circulating uh, all day. So I don't think this kind of, everywhere else we talk of incentivizing uh, the reduction of pollution. But when it comes to the weakest section on whom you can take action, that's the farmer, you immediately jump into punitive uh, actions. This is only going to result in resistance by the farmers, which may and is already starting to amount to physical resistance uh, because there's nothing else the farmer can do. Thank you very much, Raghu, to be with us discussing these issues. Continue to, continue to observe what is happening and come back to you for more of this kind. Great, thank you. Thanks is all the time we have for NewsClick today. Keep watching NewsClick and do visit our website, newsclick.in.